NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has captured a new stunning image of N79, a massive star-forming region in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy of our Milky Way. The new image reveals the glowing gas and the hidden protostars inside N79. This image is not only stunning, but also very important for studying star formation in different environments and epochs of the universe. In this video, we will explore what this image tells us about N79, how it compares to other star-forming regions, and what are the implications and challenges of studying it with Webb. So, stay tuned and let's dive into the cosmic nursery of N79. N79 is a region of interstellar atomic hydrogen that is ionized by the radiation of young, hot stars. It is located about 160,000 light years away from us, in the Large Magellanic Cloud, one of the closest galaxies to our own. It is also known as a younger version of 30 Doradus, also known as the Tarantula Nebula, another of Webb's targets. Both N79 and 30 Doradus are among the most active and massive star-forming regions in the local universe, hosting thousands of stars with masses up to 100 times that of the Sun. But N79 is younger, less evolved, and more compact than 30 Doradus, making it a unique laboratory for studying the early stages of star formation. The new image of N79 was taken by Webb's Mid-Infrared Instrument, or MIRI, which can reveal the details and structures that are hidden in the optical images taken by other telescopes, such as Hubble or ALMA. For example, in the new image, we can see the bright emission from the ionized gas, the dark lanes of dust, the clusters of young stars, and the faint glow of the warm dust. We can also see some still-embedded protostars, which are the seeds of future stars, in this field. These protostars are so young and cold that they are invisible in the optical and near-infrared, but they shine brightly in the mid-infrared. By counting and measuring these protostars, we can estimate the star formation rate and efficiency of N79 and compare it with other regions. The new image of N79 helps us understand the physical processes and conditions that shape this region, such as stellar feedback, turbulence, magnetic fields, and chemistry. Stellar feedback is the collective term for the effects of the radiation, winds, and explosions of the massive stars on their surroundings. These effects can heat, ionize, compress, or disperse the gas and dust, creating complex patterns and structures, such as bubbles, filaments, pillars, and clumps. Turbulence is the chaotic motion of the gas, which can create fluctuations in the density and pressure, and trigger or inhibit star formation. By analyzing the colors, shapes, and spectra of the gas and dust in the new image, we can infer the properties and variations of these processes and conditions, and how they interact with each other. N79 is not the only star-forming region in the universe. There are many others, both in our own galaxy and in other galaxies, that have different sizes, shapes, ages, stellar populations, and environments. By comparing and contrasting N79 with these other regions, we can learn more about the diversity and universality of star formation and how it depends on various factors and parameters. For example, we can compare N79 with 30 Doradus, which has already formed several generations of stars, some of which have exploded as supernovae, creating huge cavities and shells in the gas. It also hosts the most massive star known in the universe, R13601, which has a mass of about 250 times that of the Sun. With this comparison, we can study how star formation progresses and changes over time, and how the feedback from the massive stars affects the gas and the subsequent star formation. We can also compare N79 with the Orion Nebula, which is the closest and most famous star-forming region in our galaxy, about 1,300 light-years away from us. The Orion Nebula is similar to N79 in size and mass, but it has a lower metallicity, which means that it has less elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Metallicity is an important factor that influences the cooling, heating, and chemistry of the gas, and the formation and evolution of the stars and planets. As you can see with this comparison, 
We can study how metallicity affects star formation and how it varies across different galaxies and epochs. We can also compare N79 with the Carina Nebula, which is another massive star-forming region in our galaxy, about 7,500 light years away from us. This nebula is much larger and more complex than N79, hosting several clusters of massive stars, some of which are among the brightest and most luminous in the galaxy. It also contains some of the most spectacular and iconic structures in the sky, such as the Keyhole Nebula, the Mystic Mountain, and the Eta Carini star system, which is expected to explode as a supernova in the near future. By comparing N79 and the Carina Nebula, we can study how star formation varies with scale and complexity and how it produces some of the most extreme and fascinating phenomena in the universe. Studying N79 and other star-forming regions with Webb is not only exciting, but also challenging. Yes, Webb is the most powerful and advanced space observatory ever built, but it also has its advantages and limitations. One of the advantages of Webb is its infrared vision, which can see through the dust and reveal the hidden details and structures of N79. However, infrared light is not the only way to study star formation. There are other wavelengths and observables that can provide different and complementary information, such as radio, submillimeter, optical, ultraviolet, and X-ray. So, by combining Webb's infrared observations with other observations from different telescopes, such as ALMA, VLA, Hubble, Chandra, and others, we can obtain a more complete and comprehensive picture of N79 and other star-forming regions. Another advantage of Webb is its sensitivity, which can detect faint and distant sources, such as the still-embedded protostars in N79. However, sensitivity is not the only factor that determines the quality and accuracy of the observations. There are other factors and challenges that can affect the observations, such as resolution, calibration, noise, and contamination. For example, Resolution is the ability to distinguish between two close sources, and it depends on the wavelength and the size of the telescope. By understanding and addressing these factors and challenges, we can improve and optimize the observations of N79 and other star-forming regions with Webb, and increase the confidence and validity of the results. In this video, we have talked about a new image of N79, a massive star-forming region in the Large Magellanic Cloud. We have explored what this image tells us about N79, how it compares to other star-forming regions, and what are the implications and challenges of studying it with Webb. We have discovered that studying N79 and other star-forming regions with Webb can help us answer some of the most fundamental and intriguing questions in astronomy, such as, how do stars and planets form in different environments and epochs? How do star formation and feedback affect the evolution of galaxies and the intergalactic medium? How can we use Webb to search for signs of life in other planetary systems? We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give us a like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think of the new image of N79. What are you most curious or excited about Webb's observations of star formation? How do you think Webb will change our view of the universe? Thank you for watching and see you next time.